thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. I'm sure we will have people um, coming in as we begin this morning's session. And feel free to continue to get refreshments, uh, coffee, juice, tea, uh, and danishes uh, on the tables in the back this morning. Um, my name is Rhonda Williams. I'm the director of the Social Justice Institute here at Case Western Reserve University. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all here to our inaugural 2011 Gene Donovan International Social Justice Conference. The name of the conference is Repression, Resistance, and Transformation in Central America. We had a fabulous turnout uh, last night, despite the weather, we had over 60 people here, and many stayed not only through the film, but stayed for the conversation, and the conversation and dialogue was um, very moving, I would say, and inspiring and touching. And so we're looking forward to a great day today as well uh, with the event that we have here planned for you. I'd like to... Um, uh, uh, thank a couple people first before we move into um, the program and, and give some remarks as well from our president of the university who was unable to join us this morning. Um, I'd like uh, the members of the Social Justice uh, Institute leadership team to stand up so they could be acknowledged. Uh, the leadership team is made up of staff and faculty from across the university who are coming together to collaborate in an alliance um, model to really bring forth innovative programming and events and, and research projects and curriculum development here at the university. So if, if the leadership team members or those who are here could stand up just so that people can see who you are and you can be acknowledged. Okay, we have Mark Joseph in the back and Timothy, Timothy Beal who are here right now. I'd also like to acknowledge the planning team for this event because it would not have happened without them. So could the planning team members stand up for us as well? Can we give them a, law, a loud, huge round of applause? Thank you so much. I also want to thank our sponsors for this event. The sponsors include the Interreligious Task Force on Central America and CWR Center's Flora Stone Mather Center for Women, the Holland Project for Peace and Social Justice, the Inamori Center in which we're sitting right now, the Interreligious Council, and Share the Vision. So there may be people here from those sponsoring organizations. There may not be, but I'd like us to give us a round because I want them to know that when they see these videos, we all appreciate them really making this possible for us. Mm -hmm. I also want to provide you with some remarks from our president, Barbara Snyder, who was unable to join us uh, for this event because of a board of trustees meeting. So I'm just going to read those to you. Then I'll provide some uh, opening comments of my own, and we'll get right into the session. Good evening, that was last night, and good morning for this morning. Thank you for coming to our campus for this significant experience of learning and reflection. And those of you who were here last night, you've heard this, but they'll sound good the second time around as well. Uh, thank you for coming to our campus for this significant uh, experience of learning and reflection. I regret that I cannot provide this greeting in person, but our board of trustees is meeting this weekend and my presence is expected there. Please know that my thoughts are with you as you honor one of Case Western Reserve's most extraordinary graduates, Jean Donovan. The world knows Jean's, Jean Donovan's name because of the manner of her death. Along with three nuns, she was brutally murdered and left in a shallow grave by an El Salvadorian death squad. The incident provoked international outrage and brought unprecedented attention to the civil war in that country. It also prompted intense debate regarding the role and responsibility of developed nations in the conflict. Yet Jean Donovan's legacy is much larger than the events that followed her passing. She had earned a master's in business administration at the Weatherhead School of Management and secured a prestigious position as a management consultant for Arthur Anderson. She was engaged to a doctor and volunteering locally through the Cleveland Diocese. Something provoked Donovan to give up her comfortable Midwestern existence to serve in a country amid constant conflict. She witnessed untold horrors, lost people close to her, and feared for her own safety. Yet she did not, could not leave. As she wrote a friend in an oft-quoted passage, several times I have decided to leave El Salvador. I almost could except for the children, the poor, bruised victims of this insanity. Who would care for them? Whose heart could be so staunch as to favor the reasonable thing in a sea of their tears and loneliness? Not mine, dear friend, not mine. This sense of commitment, of calling, of unflinching courage is an example for us all. 
what lessons can we learn from Jean Donovan's involvement in the lives of people facing inconceivable loss and hardship? What difference did her mission make in the moment and now, decades later? What could developed countries have done at the time to improve conditions? What should they do in violence-ravaged places today? I commend you for engaging in this event and thank all of our speakers for participating. I hope you find this conference provocative, challenging, and most of all, rewarding. President Barbara R. Snyder, Case Western Reserve University. I'd like to start um, just with a couple quotes and um, a brief statement and then move us into the session. I was trying to think about what to say this morning after last night and the again, engaging and very heart-wrenching conversation um, that we had. And I want to start with just three brief quotes and then transition. The first quote that I want to share with you is from an Argentina leader who died at 82 years old in April 2009, Raul Alfonsin. He said, my inspiration, my inspiration comes from an ethic rather than an ideology, an ethic that believes in the freedom of man, and I would say woman. Another quote by Don Freeman, who actually is a local activist and civil rights activist, black power activist, and very much engaged in school activism today, said, do not let your commitment, do not let your commitment to the total liberation of oppressed people be contingent upon what other people do or do not do. And the third quote is from James Baldwin, a literary giant and novelist and activist. And he said, I can't be a pessimist. I can't be a pessimist because I'm alive. To be a pessimist means that you have agreed that human life is an academic matter that human life is an academic matter. So here we are together in the academy at CWRU prepared to engage in a dialogue and an educative process with each other. And this for me is extremely exciting and I hope it is for you all as well. We are here in the academy having an honest, intellectual, critical dialogue that has meaning and purpose. And in that sense, we are in the academy and we're dealing with academic intellectual issues, but it's not, quote unquote, an academic matter. It means something. It will have power and it should have resonance.